quite something. It's so wonderful to see you all here, people from so many parts of my life, important parts of my life. Let me briefly introduce my family to you. Um, they're sort of scattered. Uh, I have two daughters, Allison and Jessica. Jessica's wife, Polly, Allison's husband, Brent. Allison and Brent have two children, Jax and Abe. And uh, Jessica and Polly have two children, Miriam and Hannah. My sister-in-law is here, Kathy Lampy, Max's widow, and we're really pleased that she could join us. And I also want to make special mention of my lovely Nepali family. I hope you all get to meet them. Pramila and Brett. I hope you all have met <laughs> everybody. Um, I'm sorry that uh, Liz and Will Khan couldn't be here, but it was really just too complicated for them to come. Those are Max's children, Max and Kathy's children. And of course, it's only right to take a, a moment to remember those who are not able to be with us, those who have passed away. My, my husband, Bob, my brother, and Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, my husband, Bob, I'm with my brother, Max Kahn, who was very, very much a part of this community, as many of you know. Um, and also, uh, my grandson, David Levy, Kyle Woods Crozier, who died as an infant. It's, as I said, wonderful to see so many of you here. You're from UVM, you're from Mojave Zedek, and those are the two pillars of the community that my parents uh, hung on to, and they were very supportive of them. I'd like to especially thank Michael Shaw for putting this together. This is just incredible. David Scrace and Wolfgang Nieder, who were colleagues of my father's, and certainly Jeff Potash and Aaron Goldberg as well. So with some embarrassment, I have to tell you, I never thought much about or asked much about the hutch. It was ever present in our home, as you can see from the photos, big and kind of bulky. It held kiddish cups and some china teacups and other objects, as well as household paperwork, photo albums, and the like. So when my mother uh, sold her home on East Avenue in 1994 <coughs> in North Burlington, she asked both Max and me if either of us wanted the hutch. And we both said no. We just didn't like it very much. It was too big and it was too bulky. So at that point, my mother Irene gave the hutch to David Scrace, a treasured colleague of my father's, and to his wife Melanie. And this is where things are murky, but I'm hoping David at some point will help me figure more details out. But it apparently, at some point, my parents still in Germany decided to invest in a piece of furniture for their future home together. David thinks it's likely that a local carpenter, perhaps using a kit, made the hutch and also repaired it after it was damaged on Kristallna. Interestingly, uh, people apparently were allowed to ship a limited amount of belongings and the hutch did make it to the United States. As you can see by just looking at it, its style is very Art Deco, very 30s. So recently, Davis, Grace, and Melanie decided maybe it was time to part with the hutch. And I don't know exactly how this happened, but David spoke to Michael Shaw, and together the idea came up to donate the hutch to Wahhabi Zedek to uh, re redo it in some way to make it into a display case. Um, so what we see today is the transformation of the hutch that was always in my parents' dining room into a beautiful display case that honors my family and tells one story of the Holocaust. I am really so grateful to David and Michael for all they have done. Sadly, we are all aware of the horrors of the Holocaust. Although fortunately, Irene and Harry were able to leave Germany before they would be deported, they were not able to get their mothers out of Germany. They found themselves refugees faced with very difficult challenges of starting a new life in a new country. And as refugees, they never considered themselves survivors. As refugees, 
they always held on to what was important to them, and that was their Jewish identity. The Hutch and its contents are a tribute to that tenacity and to the tenacity and resilience of the Jewish people and in the face of unimaginable horrors, challenges, and obstacles. Many of you know the story of the Torah scroll, or maybe have just learned it today, but for those who don't, I'll be brief, but I'll, I'll give, you the, um, give you the story. On Kristallnacht, which was November 9, 10, 1938, when the Nazis burned and looted synagogues and Jewish businesses, a Gentile policeman in Rexingen, my mother's hometown, gave my father, who was then a Jewish teacher in that town, this Torah scroll. He rescued it from the synagogue and knew it was important. Its significance here, I think, is profound, and the rabbi alluded to this. Um, it's a testament to all the righteous Gentiles who were brave enough to help the Jews in one way or another. And it's also an enduring and living symbol of the lasting legacy of the Jews. So my wish is that everyone who stops to look at this lovely display case and its contents over the years ahead will be reminded not only of the death of Jews, which we are reminded of perhaps too often, but more importantly of the vitality, richness, tenacity, and endurance of the Jewish people and its traditions. My son-in-law, Rabbi Brent Spodek, read over my remarks and um, in his wonderful rabbinic way observed that our ancient hutch, that is the Aron HaKodesh, the Holy Ark, carried the complete and the broken tablets. This hutch too carries the painful legacy of the past and the Torah's promise for the future. Thank you.